Hello you multi, masterful malt maestros, and thank you to Sand of Azolari8833 for that malt mention. Wonderful. I can, I've got to put a pen through the names so I don't mention the malt mentions twice because I only get one mention. We're done. Fantastic. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1019 Extras. I'm Ralphie here in the Bothy and I'm going to talk about your apprenticeship. And we all have to do it. I had to do it. Uh, you have to do it. And importantly, it's, ra it's, ra it's like learning joinery or being an electrician or a plumber. You can't rush it. You've got to take one step at a time. And this means that when you're getting into whiskey, to the st extent that you're watching one of my videos and actively participating in the whiskey forums and you're you're going to whiskey festivals and you're thinking of joining a whiskey club you need to take things one step at a time if you get too far ahead of yourself too quickly i'm going to tell you what happens you confuse your palate you start to act right because it's very easy to pick up the signals you you're able to act a narrative on a whiskey that suggests that you're really getting it and understanding it and you know relating to it and enjoying it but in fact it's partly a performance and it really comes down to fundamentals when starting with whiskey you really need a bottle of Glen Glenfiddich 12 year old or a nice bottle and they're not expensive and they're very easy to find wherever you are or Glen, Glen Murray classic Speyside malt. Um, this is just a great little whiskey. The reason is it's simple. See when you put your nose to this it's light. It's light, fresh, gentle, slightly creamy little bit of shortbread, shortcake, so you get a little bit mild cereal note and it's designed this way. Glen Murray is it's a bit of a cult status actually because it is a hugely chameleon style of single malt which is greatly influenced by the casks that it gets matured in. Now when they're good casks you get great results. When they're bad casks it can be a disaster. Right? but you quickly gain the knowledge on a budget without busting your wallet or your purse or whatever card you happen to be waving about debit or credit um glen marie it's not as if you're going to open this bottle and finish it within the week as you huff and puff and puzzle your way through all the subtle, sophisticated nuances and the, the length of the develop, arrival, development and finish and where the sensations lie in it. You don't do that at the beginning. Do you know what? You just enjoy it and you take it slowly. If there's one piece of advice above anything else that you take away from this video, is that when you start in with your whiskey journey, take it slowly, sip it slowly, just keep it intermittent and not too much at once. Go slow. It'll get you further quicker. The Glen Marais, fresh, lemony, cleanly distilled, nicely presented, good price, it's 40%, right? So it's been pre-diluted for you. You don't have to worry about how much water to add. If I'm gonna add any water to this, do you know what? I'll give it a few drops. That's two milliliters, two milliliters. Just a little drop and I'll leave it knowing it'll be ready sooner rather than later. Cause you know the adage, one minute in the, ca in the glass for each year in the cask. How many years in the cask for this? Not many. Six, maybe eight. It'll push. Because it's a single malt, 
there's enough character there to become a little bit more animated when you add the water. Particularly, take your time in the nose early on. Really, really nose. So forget the tumbler. Tumblers are an utter waste of time. Seriously. You're adding ice to your whiskey? Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your whiskey. What to do is use a whiskey glass and put a big tumbler on the outside with the ice and then stick the glass in it if you need to cool the whiskey if you happen to be in a hot country. That's what you do. And make sure you crush the ice. Just like you'd store a bottle of champagne in a champagne bucket. Put your single malt in a cool container. It, it's simple and it really works and it's a little bit theatrical but hey, it's your dram. When you taste it. Very pleasant, very accessible. Citrusy, mild lemon citrusy, soft cereal notes, lovely vanilla, simple development, simple finish, little bit crispy, little bit tangy, lots of lovely. It's a simple single malt. It's easy for you to get your palate round and importantly, you're giving your subconscious mind and bear in mind, you as a modern consumer, which is your role, which is your role in society, to consume and generate taxes, that's your purpose, no matter what you think, because your ego will kick in and say, no, no, I'm a musician, I'm a, I carve wood, and I'm a writer, and other. No, do you know, at the end of the day, nobody really gives a damn. Not unless we're really, really good at it. We do it for ourselves, not for others. That's what matters. So as tax-paying, economic, wealth-producing units, we get a proportion back that we can spend on ourselves. So when you're starting in whiskey, carefully manage your budget. Do not overspend. So stick with your basic brands. The stuff you find in the supermarket can be absolutely fine. You'll find this in the supermarket. You'll find it in the travel retail at the airport. Although, by the way, when you check in your mobile device, you'll find generally it's more expensive than the online retailers or Amazon. So be aware of that. Airports are commerce traps, providing the illusion that you're getting a deal. I'm Ralphie. I'm telling you, you're probably not. Be aware of it. This is the whiskey you start with. See if you start with a single cask, cask strength, expensive, aged, independent bottling single malt. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to puzzle over it. You're going to fret over it. You're going to worry over it. You're going to confuse your palate. You're, you're, you're running before you can walk. And you're not helping yourself. And furthermore, you've paid a lot more money for this style of whiskey than this style of whiskey. And with these styles of whiskey, you know, it can be very hit and miss. You can really get your fingers burnt. Burn. There's nothing puts you off your whiskey journey more effectively than buying one bad bottle, which you're struggling to like, and your palate's if, and your nose is telling you, no, I don't like this. I don't understand it. I'm not enjoying it. And you'll find, you'll notice when you look in the mirror, you've got a frown in your face. Always the sign that you have mismatched with the whiskey you've bought. With these older bottles, you can get some real awkward, heavy sensations, including bitter and sour, which are too much for your immature young palate. Right? This is why you go for this. Everything's, everything's nicely engineered for convenient access. And you hold on to this. And then what you do is you pour a glass of this and maybe you've got a, someone's given you a sample from that, their bottle and then you add a little bit of that to this, right? And you say, right, let's just play with this. Let's play with it. And you build, be playful. Don't stick 
to other people's orthodoxy. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. What matters is your wallet's paying for it, your palate's experiencing it, it's your palate that matters. If you are happy to continue with gentle, accessible whiskies, what I tell you is, good on you. Good on you. You're being honest with yourself. You're being pragmatic. And you're being practical. If you're looking for more complexity, more singularity that comes from single malt, then after what it used to be about 10 to 15 years in the old days, but with the information specifically on the internet, you can really develop your palate in the space of about five years. And you can go out and you spend the extra money, but you're getting it, you're enjoying it. It's challenging your palate in the best possible way. You've got the experience to have done your research and spent wisely. Why? Because you follow the dependable reviews online because then you cross check one review against another in a search engine because you've got friends who are into whiskey and you trust their recommendations you're in a whiskey club you're affiliated to a whiskey club you're informed by a whiskey club you go to a whiskey festival you the, a whiskey festival is the ultimate taste and try before you buy it's the ultimate and therefore, when you go to the whiskey festival, the first time it's a new experience, a virgin moment, just enjoy it. Don't think too much about it. All you do, start with the gentle whiskies and then graduate to the big peaty monsters later on, so as not to confuse your palate. After a couple of whiskey festivals, maybe some big ones, maybe some small ones, then you can be more strategic and analytical about the whiskies you are going for whether they be the bigger brands or the more selective single delivered single malts from the independent bottlers like SMWS, Dram Moore, Berry Brothers and Rudd, Signatory, Gordon Nookfield. There's so many to choose from. But one thing you will find, I guarantee it. See, when you go to a whiskey festival, at some point you're going to taste a whiskey you'd never even thought about and you're going to enjoy it so, so much. And do you know why? Because you've never actually tasted anything quite like it before and your palate is saying, yes, I enjoy this. It won't articulate itself very clearly, but when you have the experience built up over time, to develop your palate, the caliber of communication between your subconscious interpretation of smell and taste and your rational data bank on what you enjoy, knowing how you enjoy it. It's all coming together. It's all kicking off and reacting an awful lot quicker. And that is very much one of the wonderful things about a proper whiskey journey. Quite simply, it's your journey, it's your specific, engineered, tailored, self-controlled journey. You are captain of your ship. You keep your hand in the steering wheel and make the most of it. Do not overspend, keep close with your budget, and most of all, just enjoy the journey. I'm Ralphie from The Bothy. With an extras, we're done and dusted. Thank you for joining me. Mop mates, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.